first casualty here, just outside the council. It's a lovely cloud. Look at that cloud. Keel over and die there just because it had enough of life. Or because it died because of microwave radiation and what it does to the poor bastards. This is Joan Walsh uh, pointing our camera at the lovely flower beds here in Carrick on Shannon by the walkway and all those lovely flowers. Now is there any bee? Oh there's one. Well there was one briefly. Oh look there's one. There was one bumblebee over there. But you think there should be a bit more? You know, all those lovely flowers all planted for biodiversity, for the wildlife, for the insects, and there isn't any. There's a fly. And then, like, what? What's? What's that? Oh look, it's an LED light. Might it be good for? Uh, be cheap on electricity, but uh, they also are connected with uh, giving off emitting frequencies. But I don't have a meter, so I can't check that. It might be benign, it might be just an LED light. So we'll go on. We're just going to do that. This is just a fact finding mission on the beautiful flowers, uh, and the beautiful flowers are all painstakingly grown for the insects. And I've seen one bumblebee. It was over here. I've just missed it. So here's another nice flower bed, all beautiful. Teeming with flowers. But nothing else happening. The sign. Biodiversity. So on the walk, all on this walk, there's these lamps. See these lamps, LED lamps, but I've no way of checking them at the moment. And then on the street along the main road to Sligo through Carrick here, there's these lamps, little knobs on top. And I believe that's not just for a sensor to tell it when to switch on, but I can't really test it until I had a, I have a meter. So we'll go on. And then here is the Tetra Mast above the Garda station. Winging away. And this is the lovely walkway on the Shannon in Carrick on Shannon. So here are the nice wind chimes. We're not going to make any more noise today, it's not that breezy. So we're further up the river now, and this is meant to be butterfly and bird garden. Budilia. Butterflies love it. And do I see any? No. Do I see any bumblebees? No. Just doing the evidence, you know. So here's the main bed. Carrick on Shannon biodiversity. Now, what does biodiversity mean? It means biological, biology, anything biological and diverse. Different things, different flowers. Oh, look, there's there's one bumblebee. We've got one bumblebee. We've got one bumblebee. I, think, I bet that's the same bumblebee I saw further down. <laughs> Anyway, good on it, but really, oh no, look, I've got a second one, got a second one. But two bumblebees don't make a crowd, does it? No. So one butterfly. So I 
but there you go, biodiversity is in flowers. So what's, what's that now? Just outside somebody's window. Is that because they put it there? Or because the council put it there? What is it? Hmm, looks very suspicious. Even though it just looks like a bit of plastic. I don't know if that's a clearer picture. Heading to, kind of to the sun. There is one of those LED lights with a knob on top. Hmm, wonder what that's doing there. I wonder what those two. Look at that one on the top. Look at that. Look at that little baby. Look at that. Look at that. What does it say? What does it say? It says Carrick and Shannon. Free Wi Fi. Proudly. Wow. Powered by magnet networks. Available here. Here. Where? Everywhere. Hmm. Oh, I see where. Look, look, it's one of those boxes again on a corner. Oh, look, there's two of them. God, you think you're having some kind of a wet dream here? I'm not. Anyway, those things are for the Wi-Fi on the streets. Thanks. Nobody asked me. Asked my for, for my consent. But there we go. Wow. Right beside the bridge here in Caracon Shannon. Ah, look at these. They went only up a couple of weeks ago. And I'm sure they're looking at me. Oh yeah, they're for traffic. Are they for the traffic? And what's that thing? This white thing. This new dish. They're new. Hmm. I'm here. These new two ones have gone up, the same as the ones on the bridge. So they're communicating with each other. But what? And with what? Hmm, interesting. I know, I'm sounding cynical. <laughs> I'm trying to be lighthearted about this. You know, we're just doing a little investigation. a closer up version view of it. What's that for? What's that for? And another one of those Wi-Fi boxes outside somebody's. Gosh, what's that? I'm not looking at the big microphone or, you know, that thing. Look at that little button. It's on top of the council buildings as well. Those things are new. And the same. Um, where is it gone now? And this one. Can you see it there? Yeah. Look at that. It's constructed very well. Except where for when it's really raining a lot and the rain comes down, hits off the roofs, goes into the drain pipes, drain, I don't know what that's drain pipes, gutters, and throws itself off onto the pavement below. So, we've got an issue there. Anyway, I kind of called it uh, her granny's knickers, you know, and or else the grey room through the round window. It's just stopped at, on the road here, Drum Kong, on the way to Ballinamore. See, 
these. These are on every pole in Ireland in the countryside. Every hundred and so metres, 200 metres. And more than a year and a half ago, or a year, more than a year should I say, I took photographs of these in Crohan village and post them on a Facebook group. And I said, what are these? Are they 5G? Are they fibre broadband? Fibre broadband usually goes underground. And um, I didn't really get an answer. There is a radiation sticker on them. I can't see if there's one on this one, but I do have photographs of them. And while I was making comments, I said in the group, I said, they look like weevils. You know the weevils you get in your garden or in the shed, in, shed, in, the, in the hedges? Um, weevils. Um, they're black, horrible little things. And, you know, if they get in the roots of your plants, uh, it's not good. You have to uh, get um, nematodes to deal with them. So I said, weevils. And then I looked at the way it was spelt. And I said, it spells we evil. I know, I know, I know. It's mad, isn't it? You couldn't make it up. You couldn't make it up. So uh, I just thought I'd take uh, just a little coverage of that particular one there. And they're everywhere. Sure, might as well take a side view while I'm here. Uh, at Drum Kong beside the Lakeside Tavern and this is the side view of these weevils so I don't know if that's focusing and um, when they were going up I did talk to a few of the air employees about them asked them what were they for and they said it was for a fibre broadband as in you know fibre broadband it goes along with the fibre but, you know, often these employees are kind of, it's like a pecking order of information. And uh, they're often kept left, left in the dark. So um, the jury is out. I have a feeling they might be fibre broadband, but there is also a transmitter in that box that is ready to go if it's not already. But I don't have a meter, um, an electro smog meter. Um, EMF meter, should I call it correctly, to check. But, um, yeah, they look like weevils. How are you doing, trees? Well, you will. Living out here in Hutton Shore. Beautiful place. But these trees seem to be happy enough. But they're not living in the town. Yeah, happy trees. I don't know if this camera is going to pick these people up. Little tiny flies. Having a grand toe time. Probably only live for 12 hours or 24 hours. But they're having a grand time. And it's brought me, brought it to mind. Get my words straight. Um, sycamore trees, beautiful sycamore trees. If you've ever been under a sycamore tree in the height of the summer, there's always a huge amount of noise going on amongst all the leaves because it attracts loads of little insects. Don't ask me what type of little insects, but it's just completely smothered under sycamore trees. And um, the sycamore trees in the centre of Carrick, in the park, and uh, I don't think I've ever stood under them and heard the sound of insects. So these little fellas are all having a grand old time. We're just visiting this beautiful place, we haven't been here for ages. So we leave them to out there. I did see one bumblebee there at lunchtime here. 
So that's good. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. And because I'm just using an ordinary camera, I'm not going to be blasting him. The only risk for him now is my dog, actually. The other risk factor. Where is he now? There he is. But you see, now I'm getting up close to him and there's nothing coming from this camera of mine. It's just a benign camera. Hello, Bee. Bumblebee. Um, so that's good. Oh, he's having a little... He, going to the clover there. So I'm going to go into town a little while and have a recce and uh, I say air a lot don't I? And air. Well there's another bumper bee. Well eat my words but as I said two bumper bees don't make a crowd or a hive or something like that. And there's that nice sound of that, whatever it is. I bet this camera doesn't pick it up. It's nice though. So yeah, it's good not to get all paranoid or freaked out. It's nice to feel ordinary and feel okay. But um, I just like to see everything nice, you know. We're all involved. So I was thinking, what is um, the plural for B? You know the way you get like a, a crow, and then you get a murder of crows. <laughs> Maybe it's murdered bees. Hmm, I wonder. No, I don't think so. Wouldn't be a murder of bees, Joan. Must look that up. So we've come into town to take a break and have a little recce and see what we can see. And I'm hoping to make it as humorous as I can, or cynical, you know, on a serious subject. Shh, don't say that, Joe. Don't say it's serious. Nah. Be like dead like, like dead like a dodo one day. We have our first casualty here. Just outside the council offices here in. Will that focus? Probably not. Anyway, just outside the council offices here in Caracon Channel, we have a bumblebee on the pavement. Now, was it because the council uses Roundup to get rid of weeds? Hmm, I don't think so. Could be. But, uh, or does it just keel over and die there just because it had enough of life? Or because it died because of microwave radiation and what it does to the poor bastards. So there's one of those murdered bumblebees outside the council offices, Carrick and Shannon. Maybe it had a traffic accident, maybe it bumped into a car. But according to Barry Trower's paper, these are dying because of microwave radiation. Now, oh. what can we see through the round window? Oh look, what are those? They're new. They're big round things, aren't they? big round white things facing in different directions. There's a third one over here. They're not that, that's an aerial, but I don't know what type of aerial. There's another one. So I wonder what they are. I wonder what they are. Now, what's through the square window? Here's the lovely sycamore, one of them 
in Carrick on Shannon. And uh, there's a bit of background noise with the plane. I can see a few things flying over there. Yeah, there's a few. They're kind of, you know, these kind of hoverfly people. You know, they're like, um, they're like little helicopters. Well, there's a few of them. But I do distinctly remember being in Dublin, down the canal, right in the centre of Dublin, being underneath a beautiful sycamore tree. And the noise of the insects under the leaves, these hoverfly people. And uh, it was abundant with them. So I'll just take it and film, you know. Just observing, as you do. And uh, I'm careful not to get anybody in the shot because I don't like it happening to myself. There's something on top of that pole too. Right, there's the other. It's, oh, look, look at that thing, that's new. Outside the dock here, Carrick on Shannon. This used to be a courthouse. No, it's an art centre and performance space. So, I wonder what's over here through the triangle window. Only people of a certain generation know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the round window, square window, and the triangle window right in the centre of town. Look at that. That's some contraption, isn't it? Hmm. At the back of these houses over here on the main street. On this street. And right beside this strange house. Hmm. I wonder why they always have their blinds down. So here's the ticket machine on Carrick on Shannon. And it's only recently got this sticker on the front. But I know the first time I saw a sign for Magnet Networks saying there was free Wi-Fi was about a year ago. When they put up these banners. These banners. Yeah, but there's this extra thing in between. It was a year ago and I saw a sign down the street saying Magnus proudly brings wife out of the street. And I have a feeling it's those little plastic doodads, there's two of them, just inside on the pole beside the banner. So the banners are lovely, but you know, with the banners put up as a kind of a, you know, just to kind of integrate the Wi-Fi on the streets, do a two-in-one job, I don't know. Hmm. So through the round window again. See this? What is it? And oh, the other one up the top. There's two of them. So what are those? What are they to do with the banner? Nothing. I think they're the Wi-Fi thingamajigs went up a year ago when they put the banners up. So is it a chicken and egg situation? Which came first and why? Was the banners just because they needed to put banners up or because they needed to put those things up? Hmm, I wonder. So I was just thinking about building regulations and standards. You know, and all these laws that they bring in, or have brought in, so, for example, a steep staircase isn't built so people don't break their neck on it. You know, or windows are open so people can escape their house if they want to. You know, don't get trapped by fire. So there's reasons for all these regulations and laws. So how come? How come there doesn't seem to be any regulation? where the mobile industry has been deregulated. No, it doesn't 
doesn't make sense. Hmm, I wonder why. Found a round window. I wonder what's through that window. What's through the round window? Kind of like the Titanic or something, isn't it? Must be a air shaft for the car parking below. I wonder what that's beside. We'll go and have a look. Oh look, lots of wood. Big sturdy logs. Hmm. I wonder when that happened. It's only recent. Aren't trees only meant to be cut down in the winter time up to the beginning of March. These are big trees. I think you need a license to do this. Oh dear. I wonder what that's about. Oh, there is a water course here or something. Maybe they cut them down to clear out the water course. They haven't done much of a good job, have they? Look, there's a shopping trolley down there. There's a big log in the middle of it. I wonder why they chopped those down. Hmm, why is that? Oh, maybe it's private land. Maybe it is. Maybe it's public land. Who knows? I am an artist. I look at things with an artistic eye. Sometimes you can see the extraordinary in the ordinary. Hmm. And look, more logs, big ones. And they're all on this site here. Now, this building being built, I believe, is a new care home or hospital facility, if that's the right term, for the HSE, the health service executive. I always thought it was a bit strange title for what is essentially meant to be the National Health Service. That'd be nicer, National Health Service, rather than Health Service Executive. So, why are those trees there? Why are they all knocked down? Hmm, I wonder why. That's a lovely flower bed, isn't it? Right beside the Bush Hotel, here in the centre of Carrick on Shannon. And I know that bees and bumblebees absolutely love lavender. Absolutely love it. I can't see any bees, can you? I can't see any bumblebees. Can you? Hmm, I wonder why. I wonder why that would be. Look at all the lovely flowers out here. Outside the back side of. Trees are nice, aren't they? They're beautiful. Oh, they're wonderful. Absolutely gorgeous. Lovely flowers. But I'm not seeing any bumblebees. Not a one. Hello, how are you? Who's all the lovely flowers? Look 
Look at all those lovely flowers. Teeming with life. I heard something go past there now. I did. Oh, fast. But nothing. Maybe there's something there. Do you see anything? Right in the middle of the afternoon, two o'clock. Nothing. Nothing. Of course, you think I was trying to prove a point here, you know. In other words, that's what I want to see, as in, to prove my point, no bumblebees or bees. No, I'm not trying to prove a point. I'm just filming and watching and looking. And I don't consider this normal to see nothing on a flower. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, look, there's more of those dishes and little button things, drums. They've only gone up a few weeks ago. And there's a camera. Wow, there's a camera. I wonder what that's for. I wonder what they are for. Hmm. spread out after they've been left behind by a plane. Hmm, I wonder why. I thought contrails just disappeared because they're made out of water vapour. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, I wonder why that tree is dead on the top. Maybe it's an old tree. Doesn't look like an old tree. why. Maybe it just sort of said, I've had enough. Nice beside this lovely junior school here in Carrick on Shannon. Looks like a nice school, doesn't it? Oh, let me see. Oh look, it's nice pine trees, We've got a nice beech tree overhead. It was looking very healthy. And uh, it's recycling up. And, uh, oh, what's, what's behind that tree? What is it? Oh, look at that. Look at that little thing. Hmm, right beside a school. I wonder why that is there. It's not really the question to go with it, but anyway. Anyway, there it is. And I'll just go over here a bit and we've got a not very well tree. Now well, in fairness, trees can be not well from a lot of things. There's a bit of a worry. Beside a junior school. Hmm. These trees. How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, do the frost get you? Haven't your leaves? Hmm. Maybe it's a bug. 
there is a nice beech tree. Not looking well. Not looking well. Isn't it? I don't like the look of those leaves. I'm facing to the sun, so I can't really see. Oh, look, look, look at you guys, right opposite the school. But you know, I'm just, I'm just filming. I'm an artist who observes things. In fairness, all those trees look very healthy, don't they? They do. They look very well. And that tree doesn't. Stop in the name of love before you break my heart. Words. Da, 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 da. Who was it? Who sang it? Look at that. Oh, oh what's up here? What is that? It's another one of those. Oh, look at all those. Of them, isn't there? There's four of them. All in a little row. And that thing. God, this is like the beginning of um, Blake 7, first episode. Do you remember Blake 7? You should look at the first episode. Oh, I love Blake 7. Hope I didn't cut off the camera there too quickly when I was taking photographs of the cameras I said wow it's like the first it's like the first episode of Blake 7 from the 70s written by Terry Nation if you've never seen Blake 7 the series how many series was there? four but only like the first two you should check out the first episode of the first series. Do you know the way they have those things outside shops? I don't know what they're called. Outside shops to stop teenagers hanging around. There's some name for it. Some sonic thing. Maybe it is purely sonic. That'd be different now from microwave radiation. But here we are. Free Wi-Fi, proudly powered by Magnet Networks, works, and Wi-Fi is a marketing term for microwave radiation. Yippee! We get free microwave radiation on the streets of Carrick on Shannon. Isn't that great? So we got this here, middle of the town, Susan. Langstaff Mitchell, poet and mystic of Irish cultural renaissance. When did that happen? Born in Carrick on Shannon in 1866, died Dublin 1926. And we have a nice quote here she must have written. And I'll read it out. Carrick. I will not walk these roads of pain. I will turn back to youth again. Tis full sunlight though past the noon. The night will not come very soon, and if we haste, we may, may lay down before sunset in Carrick Town. Hmm, that's nice. What's that extra jalobby on that? They went up about a year ago, all over the place, these things. What is it? just in case there's a big power cut or something or no that's for telephone wires I think is that telephone wires hmm I wonder what that is it's a lovely cloud look at that cloud you know the two a day down and landed on top of Sleeve Erin mountain and County Leitrim in a cloud yeah and it was the only place they could land because it was an iron mountain 
There was no other opening in all of Ireland. So they had to come and stop the sleeve and earring. Though mind you, somebody the other day was saying it's because uh, there was a flood, there was a flood, and it was the highest point they, they could land on. So was it a ship? Was it a spaceship? Which was it? Where did they come from? Where did they go? Are they still here? Are they us? I thought that sign was a very nice sign. It's a new sign. It's very well made. What are those things? See all those. They're everywhere. They haven't been finished. They're like uh, plugs or something. Something has to be added to that. I wonder what. Not the old, see the old grey plug, that's some old lamp or something. These things. Oh, here's a truck. What are they for? Oh, for what do the sons of Roisin die for? Was it greed? <laughs> I think Luke Kelly sang that or he recited it. Oh look, look at those lines that have spread out. They were originally just lines, just contrails. And look, they're persisting. That's actually scientifically impossible for contrails to do that, to persist. So there must be something in them, like particles. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Oh, for what did the sons of Roisin die for? Was it greed? Now well, we're back to the trees, or the cut down trees. And um, there are the stumps here at the back of the Bush Hotel. And to my eyes, there's nothing wrong there. Look, it's even putting out little shoots, bless it. I wonder why they cut them down. Why would that be? Why would that be, indeed? But uh, that tree looks, or what was a tree, looks really healthy. I wonder why they chopped it down. Was it leaning on a wall? Was it overlooking anything? Was it causing obstruction? Hmm, I wonder why they chopped it down. Well, it's not my tree. So, maybe there is a good reason for it being chopped down. Who knows? And I hope it's the only one I see chopped down in this town. We don't want Sheffield, thank you very much. We're not going to let that happen, are we? No, we're not going to let a tree get chopped down like Sheffield. And we're not going to take any of the excuses that, oh, you know, they're taking up the pavements, trees are obstructing something like the pavements. Hmm. Just Little did I think I'd be going around the streets, Carrick and Shannon, making comments about things. It's been kind of fun, from an artistic point of view. You know, looking at things, filming them, making a comment. But you know, I don't want to be one of those boring people's people that uh, comes out with shite like this, you know. But then again, it has to be done. I forgot to take a film of these LED lights on this road beside the school. I've got a little knob on top and they're numbered. Well, it's an exceptionally hot now. Oh, my head's gone after that, being walking around town. It's coming down now. I'm all right. You see, the thing is, 
Who's people? Ah. Uh, who are EMF sensitive. And they're like the yellow canaries they used to put down the mines. Because they feel it. But they're made of exactly the same stuff as everybody else. Same cells, everything. But on a practical point of view, for business, good business, I would say people would be unconsciously not wanting to hang around town too long. They won't be wanting to hang around in the shops for too long. They'll feel uncomfortable. They might not buy that extra dessert or maybe have that extra coffee in town because they're feeling just a little uncomfortable and they won't know why. I know why. I know why I feel uncomfortable when I'm sitting in town, especially recently. I feel uncomfortable when there's too many people with smartphones in my vicinity. Really uncomfortable. And I'm not precious. You know, I just know when I feel comfortable. So, like back in the old days when a certain hamburger company came to, the, to Ireland, they had plastic seats and tables. It was lovely. But they were designed also to make sure you didn't stick around for too long. So this free Wi-Fi on the streets. Oh, but it's great. Get free Wi-Fi. You can be looking at your mobile phone and looking at movies on the streets of Carragon Shannon for free. But is it not really shooting the town in its foot? Shooting the businesses in their foot? Shooting the visitors in their foot? It's a bit like those plastic chairs and tables in a certain hamburger restaurant. People won't want to stick around. They just won't. They won't want to hang around the shops. Chill out, have an extra beer. Well, maybe if they have an extra beer, they might. Well, same with hotels. There's Wi-Fi in hotels. I don't feel comfortable with Wi-Fi. So I think the Chamber of Commerce, people in business, should have a little think about that. Have a little think about Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi, or anything else above that on the streets of Carrick on Shannon, and how it affects the amount of people who come and stay in the town. Just a thought, just having a little opinionated thought in the car before I push on. So that's my little chatting. Bye. So after going into town for a break and then going around the town with an artistic eye with my camera, a little recce around the town, looking at things, filming things, talking about things. We've arrived at Lock 16 and it's lovely in the shade and finally I feel a bit more normal. So in conclusion to this little movie of mine which I'll put together as an artist, um, there was the thought about, the last thought was to do with people feeling uncomfortable in a town maybe not staying as long, maybe not just, uh, what's the word, window browsing, browsing in shops, buying things in shops, shops, staying in hotels, because of the endemic Wi-Fi in the town. And they won't know why, but people will feel it in their pockets, the business people, the shop owners, and the tourists won't feel so Relax, they're on their holidays, you know, eating good food, organic food, or just good food in the local pubs and restaurants. Hmm. They mightn't realise how they feel. 
Because, of course, if they own their own devices, and as Barry Trower pointed out, buried deep in a certain smartphone's uh, agreement, somewhere buried deep in the phone, it says you're meant to carry a cam, um, not a camera, their uh, smartphone 150 millimetres or centimetres, no that's a metre and a half, away from the body. And okay, that's why people have these earplugs. But if you're holding it in your hand, you're in complete contact with that device. And as Barry Trower pointed out in one of his lectures, that radiation has to go somewhere. And it travels from the device into your hand, down your arm, down your body, and tries to earth itself. And it has crossed my mind, you know, most of us wear shoes with plastic soles. I don't think that radiation can actually pass through the feet into the ground and earth itself. You can't possibly do it. Unless, say, you're, you've got a piece of copper running from your hand all the way down your arm, down your, down your body, down off your shoe and scraping against the ground. Then maybe... Maybe then it'll ground itself, the electricity, or the um, radiation from a mobile device. And then the worst scenario is, and how it affects the pockets of the business people of the towns of, of County Leitrim and County Roscommon and any town in Ireland, is you don't make much money out of dead people. You don't make any money out of dead people unless you happen to be inheriting money from them. And I won't repeat about all the thousands of, well I will repeat it, thousands of studies regarding microwave radiation and the, effect, the effects on cells and what they do. You know? So then I'm thinking dead people and there was another time the Black Death it was indiscriminate the Black Death I think it was a two thirds of the population got killed off and then the remaining third inherited the land now that would have been useful for somebody who was poor didn't have much I read up about it a long, long time ago, but I don't remember the details now. But say if somebody wants to inherit land, or like this psychopathic minority who feels justified to own everything. Hmm. Makes you have to, makes you think a bit, doesn't it? You just have to have a little think about it. Can I finish anything else on that? You know, say if you were the person behind this technology, I'd say you'd know your onions. And you'd also know, yeah, you're made of the same flesh and blood as everybody else. But you might know that you'd protect your home with white shield paint and white shield neck curtains. So, to minimise your exposure, while the rest of the population is totally oblivious and can't afford the likes of white shield, military grade paint to protect their homes.
Urination also wrote Survivors. Or Survivor? It was the BBC, I think it was BBC. Maybe it was UTV, maybe it was ITV. Series in the 70s. And uh, a bit like the swine flu vaccine, actually. It was a great series. I used to watch it. The bit I remember is the rats. The rats in London. And, uh, and I'd recommend that. The 1970s version. Because they actually don't show any dead bodies in it. I don't think. No. And it's very, it's a series really based on people and psychology. Very well done. There's none of that shock and awe. Survive, survivor, is that the name of it? Or Survivors by Terry Nation. Not seeing much biodiversity in those clovers, am I? No. Hmm, I wonder why. Oh, lovely tree. who lived in that fort if they were here. Well maybe they are here. Same people, different time. Hmm. So much going on, is there? Just as bad as my back garden, in fact. And would it be because of pesticides? I don't think so. Because this is pure cow country. There's no crops growing around here. No need for pesticides. Is it because of the chemtrails? The geoengineering in the sky? Hmm. Maybe. Quite the summer and I don't see anything. Don't mean to sound alarmist. Really, I don't. Four o'clock in the afternoon and here we are at Lock 16 outside Leitrim Village and I'm not seeing anything fly. Zero. What's that about? Really? It's very odd, you know. Is it our fault? Is it my fault? Is it your fault? Or is it a plan by design? Hmm, I wonder. I'm sick of saying that. Oh God, God almighty. Anyway, I know there'll be a happy ending. But we just got to see this down. Showdown. Showdown town. Showdown. Showdown time. That's it. Maybe they, maybe they go off for a siesta this time of day. Hmm? Do they go off and have a little siesta somewhere? Or maybe they've gone on their holiday somewhere? 
or maybe just like that bumblebee outside the county count Leitrim County Council offices in Carrickon Shannon. They're dead. And they're all dead. Well they couldn't possibly all be dead. But uh you know the power is in your pocket, in your handbag and in your hand. It's a lovely cloud. Look at that cloud. <laughs>